Hi, in today's video, we are going to talk about magnetic interactions and singlet and triplet wave functions. This will be the first video of a series on broken symmetry calculations. So the first uh, two or three slides are just a summary of knowledge that you should more or less know in order to understand the rest of the video. If you already know these things, please skip to the time code that will be on the description. So the electronic wave function has to be anti-symmetric. So this means that if you flip the labels of two electrons, the wave function has to change sign. So this is evidenced by this notation that says if particle one and two, that in here I just put different colors to make it easier to differentiate, they are flipped in the wave function, the wave function has to be multiplied by minus one. So, and this notation below is the same thing. One mathematical function that fulfills the requirement of being anti-symmetric is the determinant of a matrix. So a determinant containing the one particle orbitals is called the Slater determinant, SD. In this notation, the different orbitals are listed one after the other between two vertical bars. There's this one over square root of n is a normalization fact, where n is the number of spin orbitals that you have in the Slater determinant. This list notation is shorthand for this determinant that in here we are only focusing on two functions that in the different columns of the determinant contain the different electrons, electron 1, 2 and 3 etc. and in the different rows contain the different orbitals, uh, phi a, phi b, phi c etc. A linear combination of Slater determinants is also anti-symmetric. Certain wave functions can be composed of many Slater determinants, and this will become important later. There are various single determinant methods in which the total wave function Psi is composed of only one Slater determinant that here we just write as Psi sub SD, comma, zero, because we only have one. So Hartree-Fock and Consham density functional theory are usually uh, single determinant methods. And then you have multi-determinant methods that are, for example, configuration interaction, coupled cluster methods, or multi-configurational self-consistent field methods, such as CASE, CF, and others. So now we are going to only focus on wave functions of two electrons. In this case, we can have two types of wave functions, triplets with a total spin equal to one, and singlets with total spin equal to zero. There are three uh, triplet levels with ms equal plus 1, 0, and minus 1, and there's only one singlet state with ms equal 0. What makes a function a singlet or a triplet is that if we apply the s square operator, the square of the total spin operator on this wave function, of a, on a triplet state wave function, we will obtain the same wave function multiplied by a number which is s times s plus 1. So in the case of s equal 1 for a triplet, this number is 2. And we obtain the same wave function multiplied by this number. So a triplet is an eigenfunction of the s square operator. If we take the s square operator and act it on a singlet wave function, we will obtain the same kind of expression and we will obtain the same wave function multiplied by 0. So in this case, it is also an eigenfunction by the eigenvalue is 0. There is usually a singlet triplet energy gap between the singlet and triplet states. This energy gap can be calculated by different uh, electronic structure methods. And within the realm of magnetism, it's usually uh, calculated using what is called the Heisenberg Dirac Van Fleck Hamiltonian, which is a Hamiltonian that contains a constant J, which is the exchange coupling or isotropic exchange coupling multiplied by the spin operators acting on particle 1 times the spin operator acting on particle 2. This minus sign is basically a definition that implies J negative means that the singlet is a ground state and J positive means that the triplet is the ground state. Let's write the Slater determinant for a triplet state with ms equal plus 1. This can be achieved by having two electrons in different orbitals a and b that both are pointing up. Both have a spin plus one half or a spin alpha. So we can write this later determinant as pi sub a times alpha for electron one 
times phi sub b times alpha for electron 2. And this is the complete form of the Slater determinant. If we expand this determinant, we can obtain this uh, algebraic expression that contains the spatial orbitals and the spin variables. So in here, we can factor out the spin functions alpha for electron 1 and alpha for electron 2 outside of the bracket. And then we get one part of the total function that only depends on spatial uh, variables and another part that depends only on spin variables. And we can see here that the spatial part, which contains only the orbitals, is anti-symmetric because it has a minus sign in here. So you can see for yourself that if you exchange the labels 1 and 2, you will get the same function but with a minus sign in front of it. And then the spin part is symmetric. In here we can separate spin and spatial uh, variables. And the product of a symmetric times an anti-symmetric function is an anti-symmetric function. So it fulfills the requirement of anti-symmetry. So a triplet is an eigenfunction of the square operator. We have not proven this, but it can be calculated and we are going to do this on a later video. Similarly, we can define the wave function for a triplet with ms equal minus one. And in here, we only need to flip the spin uh, variables from alpha to beta. So in here, we see that now both particles have spin uh, minus one half. And this is also an eigenfunction of this square operator. So these two functions with ms equal plus one or ms equal minus one were quite easy to construct. But the ones with ms equal zero are a little bit harder. So if we see here and we try to put a one electron having an alpha spin and the other electron, electron two, having a beta spin, we can write the Slater determinant the same as before. But then we will see that we cannot uh, factor out the spin parts outside of the brackets. So we cannot divide this function into the product of a spatial and spin parts. What we have written here is a broken symmetry wave function. We are going to talk about that in the following video. What happens now if both electrons are on the same orbital. We have written here a Slater determinant that contains both electrons in orbital phi a. So if we carry out the determinant, we can see here that we can uh, separate again the wave function into a spatial part and spin part. And in this case, the spatial part will be symmetric and the spin part will be anti-symmetric, but the total wave function will be anti-symmetric. So, this means a, basically a closed shell singlet where the paired electrons are on the same orbitals. You don't have orbitals with only one electron. So a closed shell singlet is an eigenfunction of the S square operator. And we are going to prove this again in the next video. So if we go again to the broken symmetry wave function that we wrote before, where one electron has a plus one half spin and the other has a minus one half spin, we can quickly see that there's another possibility where electron one has a minus one half spin and electron two has a plus one half spin. So we can write this function here at the bottom and this function will be very similar, but we have flipped the alpha and beta uh, functions on both electrons. This wave function is also a broken symmetry solution. It's the other broken symmetry solution for a uh, for two particles. So if we adapt these two broken symmetry solutions, we will get to this expression that you can carry out the calculation by yourself. And in here, we can see that it will be possible to again separate the spatial part and the spin part. And we will see that the spatial part is anti-symmetric and the spin part is symmetric. And this is the same pattern that the triplet uh, wave functions had before for the ms equal plus one or minus one cases. So we can actually see that this function will be the ms equal zero function corresponding to the triplet. And we could prove this by applying the S square operator in it. On the other hand, if we subtract these two wave functions, we will get to this longer expression, has some minus signs in some places. So I will leave you to verify that this is correct. And then we will separate again the wave function into a spatial and spin part. And in here, the spatial part will be symmetric and the spin part will be anti-symmetric. 
and we can recognize that this is the ms equals zero corresponding to the total spin equals zero solution. So to sum up, we can see here that the triplet and singlet wave functions can be written for uh, two electrons in different orbitals a and b as these expressions, where the triplet wave functions are anti-symmetric in the space part and symmetric in the spin part, and the singlet wave function is symmetric in the spatial part and anti-symmetric in the spin part. So this is all for now. In the following video, we are going to see how to actually use this in order to calculate uh, singlet triplet gaps in single determinant methods such as density functional theory. Thank you very much.